think about your mission. And you probably know this from memory already. This is at the end of the book of Matthew, and just before Jesus went to heaven, he said, all right, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. That's called the Great Commission. He's telling us to do mission work. And you remember when he did that, just before he returned to heaven. That means it's important because, does anybody have a pet dog or a cat at home? You do? Oh, a lot of people. Okay. So, now, if, if you were to be at home and your parents say, okay, we're going to be gone for a little while, and just before they go out the door, they're going to say, remember to feed kitty, right? Remember to feed the dog. Because the last thing that they say is important. Jesus said, I want you to make disciples of all nations by baptizing and by teaching them everything that I told you. So what is mission work? What are you doing? What are we doing together? We are telling people about Jesus. Some of you up here might think you're kind of small to tell someone about Jesus, but you know, you can do that. I had a son, my younger son is Jared, and he used to have a fort in the backyard. He made out of plywood and some uh, lumber, hammered it together. And then he would bring his friends. He had Mitch across the street, and he had Molly and August from down the street. He'd bring them to his fort, and then, you know what they do? They play church in front of their fort. And he would talk to them about Jesus. And I asked him once, why do you do that? And he was probably about six, seven years old. He said, well, that's what Jesus told us to do. So that's what he was doing with his friends. Why do you think that we as Christian people want to talk about Jesus? Just Because, well, first of all, Jesus told us goal, right? And make disciples of all nations. And we want to do that because we, need, we know people need to hear about him. Because we're all sinful people. Like we don't fit with God. God is holy. I had a, another grandson. His name is Elijah. They live in Minneapolis. But he reminded me how everybody, all children, all adults need to hear about Jesus because we all sin. I don't know if you ever catch yourself, but if we watch ourselves, we do things like tell lies, right? Or sometimes, if you're playing a game and you think you're going to lose, you might be tempted to cheat to win. That's not right. Or sometimes, our parents ask us to do things, and we don't do them. Or they say, don't do it, and they do it. Like if there's a plate of cookies on the table just before lunch, and your mom says, wait till after lunch to have a cookie, and then she's not looking, you still grab a cookie, right? My grandson Elijah was caught in a lie. He was playing outside in the backyard touch football. We had eight of the grandsons out there. And Grandma said, come on in for lunch. We had kind of a big table. And she said, but before you eat lunch, I want everybody to wash your hands. Does that sound familiar? All right, so then they all kind of went to the bathroom, filed through, sat down in their chairs. And then Grandma said, before we pray, did everyone wash your, hand, wash your hands? And there's my yes, yes, yes. But then one person looked over at my grandson, Elijah, did you wash your hands? And he had a big grin on his face. He goes, I think I forgot. So he got up. But see how easy it is to lie, to, to deceive. So we're sinners. We need Jesus' forgiveness. And that was his mission work. He came for us, right? The God who made everything became a little baby, became one of us, so we could live the 
perfect life we can, and then he died to take away our sins. Because every sin is like a sticker on us. It says, I deserve God's punishment in hell. And for all of our sins, we'd be covered with those stickers. But Jesus died on the cross to take them all out of us and give us his righteousness. So we're in God's family. We fit in heaven with God. And because he's done so much for us, we say, Lord Jesus, I'd like to go and tell others about you and do mission work. And we can do that. Just for example, have you ever thought about the missionaries you know? You know missionaries. So, hmm, who introduced you to Jesus? Was it your parents? I bet some of you maybe were baptized up here. Do they? And when your parents brought you up here, then you were seeing them as missionaries. Using God's word and water to bring you into his family. Do any of you have grandmas and grandmas for this congregation? There's a couple. And you know, you think of grandmas and grandmas as being kind of old. How do they get to be missionaries? Do they travel overseas, talk to people about Jesus? No. They do it by when the ushers pass the offering plates, they put their money in there. And then they send others to go and do mission work. So your grandmas and grandmas can be missionaries. You can be missionaries. Did you ever think about explaining to people what Christmas is about? Do you know what Christmas is about? You know what was born, right? Not everybody understands. That's when Jesus was born. He's our Savior. Or Easter. Some people think Easter is just the Easter Bible. You can tell them what Easter really is, and you're being a missionary. That's fun. You can also be a missionary by what we're going to talk about through your school mission project as you bring your offerings. Because you're going to see people who are speaking about Jesus because you're helping to send them to do it to all kinds of kids and adults who want to hear about it. That's what I'm going to talk about. So, why do we do mission work? Jesus told us to go. He did his mission work for us that we could be in heaven with him. And now we're happy to do that for him. So let's start that right now. If we, I think you have an offering, could we collect our offering at this point? Okay. If those who are collecting would come up.
We ask you to bless the missionaries who are going to work with us in Costa Maya, Pastor Boleski and Pastor Rosales, and Teacher Christopher Dean, and bless the congregation there that their work may share the good news of Jesus with many other people. We also ask you to meet all of our other needs as we pray that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, that you have taught us. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done.
was started by a group of families from northern Wisconsin near Green Bay. That's why I have the Packers sign up there, because you know where Green Bay is, right? Where the heart is. They love Jesus. And they said, hmm, we know that there's an area in Mexico where there are hardly any churches. So they wanted to take God's word there. So it's called Costa Maya because that's a cruise ship port. And cruise ships dock there when people go on vacation. But the town that provides workers for the restaurants and the hotels is called Montreal. Has anybody been to Costa Maya? Some children have been there that I've talked with. So it's a place you can visit. Your parents can take you on a cruise. It's a beautiful place. You can see it's right by the ocean. It kind of looks like Hawaii, doesn't it? So we have a lot of people that go there, especially in the winter time. It looks great, and it's a lot of fun. And when you get off the cruise ship, right at the top is the lighthouse. <clears throat> so that lights the way. You can see that from all around. And that's our motto. There's a little lighthouse right here. Because we think it tells people a lot about who we are. We want to shine out the light of the world, right? Who's that? It's Jesus. So you're going to see that we build a first church, our first church, and its steeple looks like a lighthouse with a light on the top. So we want people to know about the light of the world. This is where the people live. Their houses are very small and they're very poor. So a lot of people would live in a house like you see on the right side, the tiny shelter. The middle class houses, like we would say our houses are in America, are kind of the ones on the left side. They're made out of the concrete. This is a restaurant. Does it look like a restaurant? This is the solo restaurant. One of the members of our church is Angela. And she has just a single burner. There's no floor. It's a sand floor. And people would eat standing up on the outside and maybe at a little table. But she named her restaurant Saul because she said, God told me I was a sinner and I have a savior. I want people to ask, why did you name your restaurant Saul? So I can tell them that they're sinners and they have a savior too. So that's her restaurant. But it shows you it's a poor area. Here are some men. They're ready to clear some land where we build our new church right behind them. You see all those caterpillars and bulldozers, diggers? What are they going to use? See what they have in their hands? You know what that is? Anybody know the word for that big knife? What is it? A machete, that's right. So they don't have the machinery we do. And so they actually cut down all those trees and stuff back there by hand with their machetes. And when they dug the foundation for the church, they took a shovel and they dug it. So it's an area that's a poor area. And children don't even go to school all that much. We need to let the light of Jesus shine because there people believe some of them are Roman Catholic, and they pay more attention to Mary than to Jesus. They're big churches in Mexico City. And some of them are Mayan in their religion. There are ruins that the cruise ships come down and let people off. You're going to see the ruins of the Mayan natives. And their god was a snake with wings. Kalkuban's name was. So some people still kind of believe in that god. So we need to tell them we're the only Lutheran church on the Yucatan Peninsula, and we want to let the light of Jesus shine, and you're helping us to do that now. So this is our outreach. This was our first church, and it wasn't the yellow building, but it was under the red roof, the awning. Because it was such a small group, we just rented the sidewalk out of weekend, and we had church under the awning. And that's what it looked like. We had lawn chairs, and there is our missionary, Pastor Molesti, and he's giving his sermon under that red roof line. But when motorcycles and buses went past, 
He had to stop because he couldn't, they couldn't hear him. We didn't have an organ because where do you put that on the sidewalk? But he could play the guitar, and that's how we had some music. So I'd like to show you a little bit about that <coughs> mission start.
here's our teacher. He graduated from Martin Luther College, just like your teachers did. And he's been down there three years teaching God's Word, as well as teaching people to write, adults and children, to read, and maybe even to look at a computer and learn a few computer skills. So here are four children learning. You can see them learning A, B, C. They're just learning to read and write. That's part of what we're doing. So they can grow up and be a responsible part of God's church. We have tea ministry on the beach. They make sand sculptures and they invite their friends to come. And of course, during the event, we can talk to them about Jesus. Here's the cleaning up the beach. We want to be part of our community, this little town of Lamalal. And so look at all the seaweed. You want to go swimming on a beach that has all that yucky seaweed? Not much, huh? So the city asked people to go and take turns cleaning, and our church, this little girl, is part of our church. We help do that. But then people know that we care about them and our community. Here's our Sunday school. You can see we have uh, children standing in front of Jesus with the children. There's a little drawing that someone drew on our wall for us. We have COVID down there too. And in order to show Jesus love, we distributed food. We helped about 400 families per week because there weren't any cruise ships coming down. And so there was no work for people. They couldn't earn any money. So you can see our van, we took food, and on that table you can see chickens out there. So we gave out food packages to families. And the government even sent soldiers, you see the one standing on the side, so that people wouldn't take too much. But whenever we gave out food, we also had a devotion time and told people about Jesus. We gave five chicks her family because remember they're very poor and they live out of those little houses so they can let the chicks loose they can eat and when they get older what do the chicks chickens give them the little round things eggs right yeah so they produced they kept on producing eggs to eat and we helped those folks for about a year when there was no work in Mount Wall. Some of those chicks became pets too. There's one. So we started building our church because we had too many people to fit under the sidewalk church, under that red roof. And we dedicated this last, oh, I have the wrong year, uh, 2022. And that's what the new church looks like on the inside. And we called a second pastor who is going to be talking about Jesus. He's from our Mexican church body. His name is Carlos Rosales. So you're going to help him talk about Jesus to the children and the families, especially. So that those are his family. His wife is Vicky, and his son is Ezra, and his daughter is Antares. And we want to go farther. You're going to help us do more mission work. Yeah, I mean, people's homes, that's, that's the key thing. So they can really develop their work the best way they can possibly do. It's also fun to talk to people and they can really see their face right up. And it comes mostly when you can really connect with them on the other We know how people live, how they eat, how they cook. Find out what people are like, 
that's what you're helping to do. And you're going to help us spread the gospel over the whole Yucatan Peninsula. So we've done it through COVID relief. We've got a, a little Bible study and church going in a new town about an hour away. That's a picture of that town. It's called Excalab. And we're using digital outreach called Academia Cristo. It's an online Bible study. So does that ever look familiar? If people don't even have a car or a roof or, or a, a floor in their home, they'll probably have a cell phone. So this is an online Bible study that they can learn about Jesus with from just starting out at kindergarten level all the way through college level. So we try to get people interested with Facebook ads so if you're looking at Facebook, an ad will pop up and invites them to do Bible study to learn about God through Academia Cristo, the Academy of Christ. And there's Christian music they can listen to also. Mexican music that they enjoy listening to that talks about Jesus. And right now, Academia Cristo has how many followers? You see that? 1,500,000. 7,000 followers already, and 600 people have started Bible study this past year through online learning. So we want to tell people about Jesus in as many ways as possible, and that's what you're helping to do. You're sending Pastor Valesky, Pastor Rosales out down the beach working with children and adults, and they teach in Academia Cristo in an online course, too. So we tell them about Jesus. That's what we're doing together. You should put your picture there because you're one of the missionaries, just like the others. So you can pray for the mission and support it with your offerings as you're going to do. And I hope you can even visit, maybe even volunteer to work down there or think of becoming a pastor or a teacher and becoming a mission worker. Here's a, our closing summary. This is what's happening at our mission now. Oh, didn't start.
gives you an understanding of what you're helping to do with all those people down there. And more and more learning all the time. So thank you for your offerings already. And for helping to share the things of Jesus. Let's thank Pastor Fleiss for coming and sharing about where our missions are going to be. Thank you. 